matter, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've got a story to tell you today, and it's about Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. And the subject today I'm going to be talking about is the ingathering of the elect. So a lot of people don't know what's in store for them, and there is a reason for you to make a decision for Jesus today. I'm going to be reading from Matthew 24, and it will explain some things to you. And verse 30 says, And at that time the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather the elect from the four winds and from one end of the heavens to the other. And so that's talking about the rapture of the church. Very important to know if you are elect. And so there are scriptures here, talks about that, and I'm going to share them shortly. But I'm going to say, it says at that time, and in verse 29, it says, it's talking about immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. And so it's talking about a time of great um, trauma in this world. You're seeing things happening on the news every day and in fact only in the last few days our people in Germany and France were struck by lightning. That's just one of the other things. And in Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> in our country. And so already you've heard me preach before about the, the four blood moons and the eclipse of the sun and that's already taken place the final ones this year and we're living in a time of great change and so this time that we're talking about really is it's a, a, a time when all the Jewish prophecies are coming to pass and so we have a high expectation that Jesus will be coming for us very soon and so this is the reason why we're out here. We're preaching the gospel so because God would have it that none perish and all come to repentance. And so we've got people coming from all different countries, different faiths, and when you hear this gospel, it has the power to change what you, where you are because it touches your heart. It's supernatural. And so that's why we do it, because it's a call of God on our lives. Everybody that's born again is uh, their apostles, they're being called and sent uh, to preach the gospel to all creation. <clears throat> but it talks about, I was going to read from the uh, Revelation, it talks about what's going to happen. It talks about in these times of tribulation when there's going to be stars falling from heaven and that, that particular one it refers to in Revelation 8, it talks about wormwood. And it's a blazing star that fell to earth. And what it does, that particular star, it, it darkens the moon, or one third of the moon, darkens the sun. And so great things are happening in the, in the universe. Big things happen through this star that enters our solar system and knocks out some of the planets. This is coming very soon. <laughs> and it says, for those that are left behind, what happens is we who are in Christ, we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, we'll be going with Jesus when he comes for us. And those that are left behind, it says that uh, if a time wasn't cut short with the tribulation, a seven year period of tribulation that follows, if that time was not cut short, nobody would survive it. So the one thing that you don't want to be is left behind. And so I'm talking to all those people from all the different religions 
Just hearken to what I'm about to say. It is so important that you know, because God, there's only one God, and he created all things, the heavens and the earth, and each of us, he, he, he made us in his image, and he, he told us that we're very good, and so all the people that are, have come from overseas to Australia, most of us have, what is, we've been brought here by God, because yeah. the Bible says that all in God, all things live and move and have their being. And so you're not here by just chance, you're here because God brought you here. And if you neglect what God has got for you, that's your problem because uh, there are bad things ahead. And so the simple thing is that the gospel is easy to receive and because what the Bible says also, it says what comes from your mouth comes from your heart. And so if you're able to confess, just read a prayer that we present to you, we, we trust the word of God that it will uh, come from your heart and from your heart is where you confess Jesus. And so that's what um, um, we're going to be dealing with in the moment. And so if you want to be chosen by God, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so if you are Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, uh, any faith at all, even Christians are not born again, the ones that are not born again, they have to receive the full monty, if you want to call it that, the full amount. And that is not half-baked Christians. You need to be born again by the Spirit of God. Amen. And so um, most of the churches have been um, sharing a wrong gospel because the Bible is very clear. So what it is, when you leave something out of the Scriptures, it's like cutting a page out of the Bible. And so don't do that. And so if you listen to what I'm saying, it is the truth because what you need to do to be saved is you need to repent first. And what repentance is, repentance is uh, turning away from your ways to God's way. And if you seek God with all your heart, you'll find him. And so he doesn't, he, he conceals himself and it really depends on you. If you uh, open your heart up and you look for him, you'll find him. And so it, what to do to be saved is repent. And that's what the Bible says in 1 John 1 9, it says that God is faithful to forgive. If you repent, he will deliver you from all unrighteousness. And so, and then you receive the Holy Spirit. So you're baptized in, in the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you'll be saved and your sins forgiven. And the important thing that the church has lost, they, they read the Gospels. They teach the Gospels, but they neglect the book of Acts. The book of Acts is telling you about the church itself. And so they're missing the point because God can do anything. Nothing's impossible with God. He can baptize you with the Holy Spirit, but he won't do it unless you ask. You need to repent first to be clean. That's the only way you can approach God. But when you repent and ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God can do it sovereignly. And I've written a paper this week on this, that there's um, uh, the late Gordon Gibbs, he was um, a mighty man of God from out in the Penrith church area. And um, he came to Bible college when I was there, and he admitted that he was in ministry for 12 years before, and he kept seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and he didn't receive until then. But what the book of Acts tells me, that the preferred way God would do it, is because he's made believers the hands and feet of Jesus. And so we can go and minister the Holy Spirit because Acts 18 tells us about um, Simon the sorcerer wanting to buy the gift because when he saw that the Holy Spirit was given by the laying of the apostles' hands, uh, that's what happened. But he, he didn't repent because that's what... Um, a possible, a possible, Apostle Peter said he said you need to repent and so that's what we do we make sure you repent and then we'll minister the Holy Spirit and then you'll discover the actual depth of Christianity it's a personal relationship with God yeah. and so if you 
If you don't have a personal relationship with God, you need to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because you don't know God and he will reject you unless you're in a personal relationship. And that comes by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a miracle from on high. And so this miracle on high is life-changing. I just want you to know that I'm probably one of the longest uh, serving, I guess, uh, Anglicans in Australia <laughs> because I was actually sitting under the teaching in the Anglican Church in 1940. I was uh, become an adherent, I was baptised and an adherent in the Anglican Church in 1942 and I've loved Jesus all my life and I want you to know this, it's no burden to carry and it's very good to have this knowledge in the time of a storm in your life because he is your refuge. He's your tower and your strength. And so I want you to know this, that it hasn't been allowed to carry and it's only later in life that I discovered about the baptism of the Holy Spirit because nobody ever taught me. God had to move on me sovereignly to show me that that's what I needed to do. And when I did this, my life changed dramatically is because I speak to Jesus all the time. And Jesus is God, by the way, if you don't know, he is. Because there's only one God, and he comes, he reveals himself as three persons to this world. Because Jesus came in the flesh, he was the Lamb of God. He had to come to take upon himself the curse of sin and death. And, and through that, that's how we receive salvation. But God is spirit, uh, God the Father, but God, the Holy Spirit, is here. It's the Spirit of Jesus that we're talking about. And the Spirit of Jesus lives in our heart when we're born again. And he promises never to leave us nor forsake us. And it's a great blessing. I can tell you, don't <laughs> it's too exciting. <laughs> it is exciting. And so you need to say yes when we come around and ask you to pray. So God bless you all. Thank you.